Hey everyone and welcome to the final two weeks of the Pac-12 baseball season. This is Connor Letourneau, he covers the Oregon State Beavers. I'm Tyson Alger, once again here to talk about the Oregon Ducks. We've been doing this little weekly video for, you know, probably like the last two months now. We're finally getting down to the crunch time and it's really an exciting time for both fan bases to watch for, as we've been saying for the last couple weeks, very different reasons. Um, I guess I'll start with the Ducks on this round. Uh, Oregon right now, as they've done for the last couple of weeks, they've been kind of hanging on, doing just enough to hang on. Uh, they just finished a two-game midweek sweep of Gonzaga. They have Utah coming up this weekend. Uh, kind of like the Beavers, it's, it's a couple of weeks where these teams need to kind of clean up against the bad teams, especially for Oregon. Uh, they, essentially, they have one last big series against UCLA, and that's going to be, in my mind, the big kind of factor in whether or not they make the playoffs or not. Yeah, Oregon State is playing their best baseball of the season. I think they're 5 0 and 1 in their past six games. Uh, last weekend against Utah, they their pitching was absolutely dominant, yeah. holding the Utes scoreless in the first two games. And then kind of a weird thing happened Sunday. Uh, they gave up two runs late, ended up going 15 innings. The game had to be called <laughs> tie game because uh, Utah had to make their flight home. I admit, I wasn't paying attention to that game, so when I was coming back through the records this week, and I was like, Utah's yeah, it's a, a tie? Who the heck has a tie in <laughs> Oregon State? And uh, Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of, I, I didn't know they had that rule, and I, I guess since Oregon State already won the series, it didn't really matter. But And apparently, the Utes still missed their flight, so <laughs> in retrospect, they should have finished it off, but, uh, you know, they, the, really, their pitching was what had been carrying them the past few weeks, and then their bats really exploded yeah. yesterday against a really subpar Portland team. They beat them 20 to nothing. Oregon State had tied a school record with seven home runs. Um, I think a lot of that is just due to the fact that Portland is just not a good pitching team. Yeah. But, uh, you know, hopefully they can get some confidence from that. If their bats can come alive, I, I think you have to like their chances going forward. Well, especially the, the, this Oregon State team, it, it started out a very unlike Oregon State season where they didn't have a lot of expectations. They had a lot of new guys. And now, you know, come towards the end of May, they're really playing kind of like the Pat Casey teams that have done for the past, you know, six, seven, eight, nine years. Yeah, no, I think it's two factors. One, they're getting comfortable with each other, growing, they're growing into their roles. Obviously, they're an extremely young team. More than half of their contributors are, are first-year players with this with this club. Um, so that's one one thing. And the other thing is that their schedule is getting easier. Yeah. They're kind of feasting on the lower half of the Pac-12 right now, and it doesn't really get much harder until that last series of the regular season when they play Cal. Yeah. Uh, if they can beat Cal and do well in the other series, I you gotta like they their got a chances chance to host, right? To host, yeah. yeah. They're they're in all the top twenty five polls yeah. now, and you know it's the top sixteen that hosts. So they're very much in the in the hunt for that. You know, talking about taking care of business against those bad teams, that's really been, you know, if if you point to something in terms of what really derailed the Duck season this year. It was a month stretch in April where they lost to a lot of bad teams. If if you look at their RPI, they're they're three and three against top twenty five teams. Which uh, a week ago I wrote a story about that. There's only twenty three teams in the country that have a better winning percentage against RPI teams, top twenty five or not. But if you go down the list and look at like their record against teams like a hundred through one hundred and fifty, they're four. And this was before they played Gonzaga. They were four and seven. You know that's that's just those are games that you need to win, especially when you're trying to make the playoffs here. So. Uh, that's one of the things that they've actually kind of turned the corner on a little bit lately. They they took series from Washington State, a bad team. They took series from Stanford, a bad team. And now they got that Utah team that uh, Oregon State didn't really have too many problems except for, you know, a little tie game on Sunday. Yeah, Utah's a program that is much better than they were a year ago, but it's going to take a couple years for them to really compete in, at this level. And Stanford has been the, the aberration, I think, yeah. of the conference. I, I think we both thought uh -huh. that Stanford was going to be a pretty decent team coming into this season. Yeah, no, and they have been nothing but poor pretty much the whole <laughs> yeah. year. They've been toiling, uh, trading that bottom spot with, with Utah off and on throughout the season. Um, it'll be important for Oregon State to go out and potentially sweep yeah. on the road. It's always hard to sweep on the road in the Pac-12, but you would think it's possible given how Stanford has struggled this year. So... Big, big important week to you know follow, follow all of our coverage, of course, on OregonLive.com because when we come back next week, or if Oregon takes care of business against Utah, we're going to be hyping up this Oregon-UCLA series. There is a little civil war on Tuesday as well. Yeah, let's uh, not forget yeah, about let's, that. Let's not forget about that, which is going to be important for Oregon too because that's another 
higher ranked RPI team, just as it was two weeks ago when Oregon State just absolutely spanked Oregon. That was not a good loss for the Ducks, but uh, it's going to make for a really fun last week because Oregon State's going to be playing to potentially host, and Oregon might have a shot at making it. So uh, stay tuned.